the James Trotter Show, 187 Christie Street in New York. The first thing that you notice about James Trotter's show when you walk in is that he's built this cave. It's like a uh, like a, a playhouse or something, and the show has like a real carnival uh, atmosphere. And um, the the thing that really stuck you know stuck in my craw was that it has a feeling of Kansas City art. And what I'm saying is that uh, not that James's work isn't unique. It is. It's absolutely unique. And it also has this thing that's very unique to Kansas City, which uh, was noted by art critic Alice Thorson in the late 80s, early 90s, and that is a time and grime feel. And you see this in other Kansas City artists like Eric Lindvite, Chris Ketchy, myself. I mean, I could really go down the list of people that have uh, different looks to their work, different aesthetics, but they all ha also have this like time and grime feel, meaning it looks sort of uh, unpretty and in its unpretty look or its unclean look, right, it's beautiful. You know, even in somebody, uh, a Kansas City artist that's like, does like so a super slick work like Archie Scott Gober, that work even like, you know, he'll like take out a little area and make it look, you know, spend time on like a little section to make it look aged. So um, it really is prevalent uh, in Kansas City. It's just, um, and uh, when you listen to James's conversation, you hear him speak of this. When he talks about the construction of the cave or the playhouse or whatever you want to call it, um, he talks about sending back to Kansas City, like uh, calling Kansas City and saying, uh, send me everything on my studio floor. And he just had everything on his studio floor uh, put in a box and UPSed up here, and that's what he made the cave out of. Now that is very Kansas City-like, you know, just almost like leaving the stuff on the floor to let it age like a fine wine or cheese. I find myself doing it, James does it, and I know other artists that do this too from Kansas City. It really always has this kind of battered look to it. Uh, tape, uh, glues, that kind of thing. Uh, it's all used for his installation, and it also has a very temporal feel, and um, it's a very beautiful show. Man, but like it was just scraps from my studio floor that later became better drawings. Now, now you're you're aware that like uh, uh, there's been artists from Kansas City, including myself, that work in this genre. You you know this? No, no, you don't know this. No. This would actually like seeing you do it. Uh, me, Bob, it's almost like that. It's like um, I, the first one I ever did. did was Jim when I lived in Miami, Florida. Oh, really? Yeah. So you've been doing this for a long time. Since yeah. like 1990. You didn't know Jim Leedy before you did this. No, I didn't know Jim Leedy till I lived at Leedyville. And is Jim Leedy was he influential upon your work at all? Do you? No, in fact, it? Jim Leedy and I got in an argument because. He felt that my artwork, we were in a group show together, and he felt that mine was getting too close to his. I love it. And I was like, hey, man, you're like a community leader. Like, I'm just, like, coming along. Like, let me he, just have what my it, space. Don't be so fucking greedy. What did he, he say to you? Oh, he just got in some argument with me. He didn't say anything to me. He went and bitched to John O'Brien about it. To John O'Brien. Yeah. See, I was coming back with, like, house paint and duct tape and just right. coming back and... and and trying to get the whole thing. Uh, done. This stuff speaks to me, of course, on you know because um, you know I. It's it's not look. It, it's not like yours is totally individual and everything. It's yeah. not like mine. It's not like Bob Moon's, but it does have these elements where like you'll take like these um, these found objects in your collection and stuff, and you'll do an installation with it. It's great, man. It looks great. You know, it, it reminds me of a lot of things. It reminds me of folk art. Yeah. You know, it, it, they're creepy. They are creepy. Yeah, they're there's creepy. a creepiness to it. Like, yeah. this guy's great. Where'd you yeah. get him? Uh, you know, I don't even know. Probably some garage sale, and then I want to just hang all the lights from him, and, and then, like, all this shit was just like scraps from my studio floor on the way to make those drawings, you know, like to get loose, I would just draw a whole bunch of these. A lot of little things to make yeah, a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I thought like, well, just taping together all the lot of little things would make a big thing too, you know? Oh, and it totally, it finishes that out. I mean, like with the, like you might have, I guess, considered some of these like sketches or something, but as a whole, 
it ends up like working as like yeah. a whole finished object. I like the way it looks from outside too, because it's kind of like a boulder from the That's outside. That's what I thought it was. And then I came in here and I said, holy shit. And I knew that you did altars like this, because yeah. I'd seen a couple online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's fantastic. It really looks fucking great. How are sales? Any, anything? Uh, no, nothing. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you, do you, you, you make a living from art? Um, not necessarily. Enough money to like continue to live, but then at times you what know. What the hell is this? And gay, not gay. Yeah. Like this had half my friends. Gay, not gay. Right. That was a sign I saw. This guy had. He, he was a Chinese doctor. He could make photocopies, faxes, and herbs. That's totally New York shit right there. No shit. Yeah. But gay, not gay. That's totally New York too. Like, I'm very straight, but I'm kind of gay too. Well, sure, yeah, I'm not I love this, yeah, like, this is my dream, like, one day for a lot of coffees and Russian bookers, like, we're gonna be bitch. <laughs> yeah, and, and this, uh, yeah, yeah, you, 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 you and totally I'm named him Bill Ding. You see the name down there? Bill Ding. I was like, well, you guys don't work? I mean, because to me it takes a lot of drawings to make one, you know, even if it's not, like, all right, when, when you make this stuff, are you using an opaque projector? No, no, no. You freehand all this? Yeah, no, this is, I don't even use pencils, man. I go straight with pen. That's why I drew a bunch of these. Oh, pencils. so you're a person that can really draw. Oh, yeah, I can draw anything. Yeah, see, that's like, I can't, I can't, if I, if I was going to, I would have to do some kind of thing. Yeah, well, it was one day I just decided that, like, I had all these ideas that I couldn't, like, I was like, everyone else at the art institute before I quit, I was like, just was like hanging out and drinking beer and shit and like wasn't really good in anything in particular. Right. And then one day I thought like, if I really want to be an artist, I have to learn how to draw to be able to do the things I want to do. So then I just kind of taught myself how to draw and started drawing. I know artists like Archie Scott Goldberg. He can draw like a motherfucker, but he still uses a camera. And I don't understand that because I can't, I can't draw. And I have to use a camera, and then like I see somebody like Archie, you know Scott yeah, Gober, that can draw like a motherfucker, but still uses a camera. You know, it, I'm not saying I think it's fine. I think it's fine that he uses the camera and everything. Scott Gober, like for a while, like when I like my first year there, he was probably like a senior, and I thought his artwork was so cool. I right. He was like fucking cool. He's was, like doing these little cartoon type things that were all mashed together, and I thought they were just so cool. Ten years. So you are, uh, what is that, common law marriage? Yeah. That's sweet. When are you going to buy her the ring?